Hello there. I hope you had a good time in Noir Alley with Eddie Muller. I'm Alicia Malone, and let's start our daytime programming with Betty Davis and Charles Boyer, shall we? From 1940, directed by Anatole Litvak, our film is All This and Heaven Too. Betty Davis plays a French teacher new to a school in the mid-1800s who is forced to confront her past when one of her students discovers a newspaper article written about her. So she decides to tell her story to the young girls of how she became a governess in France to the children of a duke, played by Charles Boyer, and a duchess, played by Barbara O'Neill, and ended up being involved in a scandal that helped to bring down the King of France. This script was adapted by Casey Robinson based on the popular novel by Rachel Field that told the true story of Field's great aunt, the character Betty Davis plays. Warner Brothers had won the rights to Field's book, reportedly paying $100,000 for it. They knew it had the perfect lead role for their star, Betty Davis, who was placed with Charles Boyer for the first and only time. But Boyer almost didn't get to make this movie. He'd returned to France in 1939 for a film role just as Germany started attacking Poland. Boyer's movie was cancelled and he was so moved to help he enlisted in the French army. But in the end, the army thought Boyer would be more useful if he were making Hollywood movies, so he was discharged and sent back to America. From 1940, also with Virginia Wadler, let's watch All This and Heaven Too. Betty Davis was happy to work with Charles Boyer in All This and Heaven Too, but was less happy to be directed by Anatole Litvak. The two had previously made The Sisters from 1938, but didn't always get along on this set. One point they disagreed on was the look of the Duchess. Barbara O'Neill was very beautiful and didn't look anything like the real Duchess, and O'Neill apparently wanted to transform into how she had been described in books. Betty Davis agreed, perhaps unsurprisingly, since she was an actress who was never afraid of appearing unglamorous on screen for a role, but Litvak and Warner Brothers wanted O'Neill to keep her natural beauty. Regardless, O'Neill put in a great performance and ended up with one of the film's three Oscar nominations. The other two were for Best Cinematography by Ernest Haller and Best Picture, but the winner that year was Rebecca. And from one Oscar nominee to another, I'll be back after this break with a powerful drama from 1958 starring Paul Newman and Elizabeth Taylor.